Hey, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying all of the cost breakdown videos in this series. Not only did I show you how I shop for ingredients, where I shop for ingredients, how I break down the cost of everything, but in this video, I'm making a cake actually for my brother-in-law's birthday. And I thought it would be cool not only to make the cake, but again, to shop for it, show you all the behind the scenes, and then most importantly, show you exactly how to break down the cost. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know if you have any questions and let's make a cake together. When I first started baking from home, as you know, I didn't have a ton of space, very much like you, I'm sure. So you've gotta buy small items, right? This is a two pound bag of confectioner sugar, very different from when I was shopping for inventory in my brick and mortar bakery. Everything we bought was in the 50 pound bag. So I don't have room to put a 50 pound bag at home, so you gotta kinda of stick with things like this. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of purchasing in bulk, but what to do when you don't have the space and you gotta buy little bags of sugar like this. Taking all of the costs into consideration is going to be super helpful for making sure that you arrive at a profitable rate for when you're selling your products. So, although I would love to buy baking powder in bulk because it's a lot cheaper, I've gotta buy baking powder, not so in bulk from home. So we're gonna do a price breakdown on three different stores and inventory in different sizes. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make one cake, which we happen to be making um, a chocolate lover's cake from this cookbook, the Generate Cookbook. It looks really yummy, it's my brother's birthday. So the chocolate lover's cake on page 162, I'm gonna show you how to take this one recipe and I'm gonna show you how when we shop for ingredients in three different places, that one recipe could be a totally different price. So let's do this. So one of the disadvantages in buying in bulk is obviously if I invest in this much pure Madagascar vanilla extract, this is close to $300 just for a gallon. Um, and you can get tons of teaspoons out of this versus this is only two ounces. It's a lot less expensive, so there's not a huge investment when you're first starting out, but over time, this per teaspoon is gonna cost a lot more. Same is true for when we shop for vanilla beans. Um, on average, if you're getting them just you know one bean at a time, um, those are gonna cost you between one and five dollars each versus buying in bulk. So some things I do wish I could still purchase in bulk, but you're gonna learn about the benefits in this video. Okay, in a previous video that I did on how to properly price your products, we spent a lot of time breaking down something simple like parchment paper. And it's important to do that for every single ingredient, including you know paper goods. So we basically came up with this particular um, parchment paper, which is not in bulk, for every foot, which is about this much. Um, it was gonna be about 50 cents per customer. I have it all broken down, don't worry but we're also going to spray. This is not bulk, obviously. I got this from Walmart, so we're gonna account for this and the cost of this, but we're gonna spray the pans, and I would say it's about a half an ounce for each pan when we spray it. So we're gonna count a whole ounce for this project. Um, what I was saying about the parchment paper, though, is if you can have the best practice to do things in bulk that you know you're gonna be like using lots of these, Cut a bunch of them so that way you have them and you don't have to mess around with them every single time you make a cake. 
So boom, we're done. Two pounds, 0.85. Two pounds, 0.85. I'm done, I'm out of here. This is what you wanna do though. Make sure that you're baking an even cake. So we're making ganache, which is for the chocolate buttercream. And also because we're gonna layer our cake with it as well. So every baker needs some sort of hack. Get a cup, you can get a pastry bag, and there's your helper. We're gonna pour half of our ganache in here so that way we can use it to layer the inside of the cake. And then the rest of the ganache is gonna go into the frosting. Okay, so now that our cakes are baked, we've got two six inch cakes. We're gonna cut these into two layers. So the total cake's gonna be four layers. It's gonna be really tall, like a barrel cake. Um, we've got bananas, Nutella. We might use some Oreos. If we use sprinkles, I'm gonna show you how to break it all down cost-wise. So let's get busy. All right, so one of the things you wanna do when you're baking is account for everything. I say it all the time. In this case, we filled a bag full of Nutella, but we have no clue how much we're gonna actually use. So I'm gonna show you how to weigh it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our scale here. And we're gonna put this on and make sure that it's on ounces and right now it's at zero which means any additional weight that I put on it it's going to count all right so let's figure out how much Nutella we're gonna use so we've used 1.9 ounces we'll just round that up to two ounces of Nutella I'm gonna keep track of this for each layer because we wanna know how much Nutella we have to charge for this cake or include. Once you do for one cake, you'll be able to kind of make notes and repeat the process, you know, in cakes, you know, that you do in the future. You don't have to do this every time, but it's always a good idea to have a roundabout idea of how much you should be charging to include Nutella in as this flavor. So a lot of people don't know how to charge for their sprinkles. This container is 11 ounces and it costs $3.99. So I'm gonna show you how to factor that into the cake that we're making, of course. But I wanted to show you, I put a bowl on here, I dumped out the entire contents and it says 10.95. So I'm missing 0.5. This is important for you to know though because this is what you would put in. So you got 10.95 ounces for $3.99. Now that everything's in here, we're going to figure out how much the cake weighs without the sprinkles. 
So this cake weighs 613.95. You're gonna wanna write this number down when you're making this cake from home or any of your stuff from home because we're going to weigh it now, put sprinkles on, and then re-weigh it so we know how many ounces of sprinkles that we need to charge for. So let's check it out and see how much it weighs now. For this particular example, I'm gonna be using a recipe from the Genere Cake Cookbook, and it is called her Chocolate Lover's Cake. So I've put the recipe here, and I've listed it in this Excel spreadsheet, and basically these are all of the ingredients and the exact measurements that we're going to need in order to make this cake. All right, first up, we shopped at Walmart. In this first column here, these are the exact prices that we spent on a pack of butter. So we bought one pound of butter, cost us $4.47. We bought um, four ounces of dark baking chocolate. You can see vanilla eggs, all of the things. So this is kind of assuming that I don't have any of these ingredients on hand, or if you're just trying to get a grasp of how to take control of your pricing, I would start with something small like this. You don't need to factor in a huge cost of a huge package, just start with something small, and these are, again, basic Walmart prices, and this is how you could figure out how much it would cost you to not only go to the store and buy everything that you needed, but in a second I'm gonna show you how to break it down. So my trip to Walmart cost me $47.05. So if someone asked me today to bake a cake for them and I don't have any of these ingredients on hand, I'm gonna hop in my car, I'm gonna drive to the store, and I am going to check out at Walmart for $47.05 just to buy all of the ingredients that I'm gonna need to make this cake. Now, I'm gonna show you what that same shopping trip looks like if we also buy these exact same ingredients from Costco. So, at Costco, the size of the packages are much bigger. I wanna point out just a few key things. So, obviously, we're buying four pounds of uh, butter versus one pound at Walmart. So, although it was only 447 at Walmart, which is a savings, we're getting so much more. We're getting three extra pounds from Costco, right? The next thing I wanna point out is let's take flour. So we bought five pounds of flour. We only spent $2.98 at Walmart. That's great, but really 50 pounds only costs you $17.49. So there's a huge savings, but obviously it can get really costly because this shopping trip to Costco cost me a whopping $167.14. So again, this is assuming I have none of these ingredients on hand. I'm going to get in the car, go buy everything from Costco, and this is exactly how much I would spend just for the ingredients for this recipe. Moving on to Baker's Bodega. Baker's Bodega, you can purchase in bulk. I have a wholesale account with them, so this is really big, these are really big packages. So I'm going to be getting 30 pounds of butter instead of four pounds. Again, some of you may not be able to shop in bulk like this because you're making cakes from home and you just don't have the space for it, right? The point of this video is just to simply show you that every single time you ask somebody, how much should I charge for this cake? It is so different for every single person. It's based on where you live, what time of the year it is, what the cost of commodities are, and most importantly, what their purchasing power is. So if you asked me, the owner of the Cake Mamas who purchases everything in bulk, how much you should charge for something, my cost is surprisingly gonna be way different than what it would be for you, and I'll get to that in a second. So some things to kind of point out here, yes, we spent $42 on eggs, but we also got 200 of them 
versus only getting a dozen at um, Walmart. One thing is I kept salt the exact same because you're usually just using a pinch of salt. I usually, it comes out to like a penny for salt. So I just kept it the same because I don't really need to buy salt in major bulk. Another thing to point out, when we bought cocoa powder from Walmart, it was only $4.17, but it was for eight ounces. I used that entire package for this one recipe versus buying 50 pounds of cocoa powder if I'm baking in bulk, and that costing me 156. So the big thing I want you to see here is that I bought the exact same ingredients I just bought different size packages. And so whether you are on a budget, you know, you could be spending $47 at Walmart, or if you're looking to mass bake and mass produce, then you might have an initial investment of $645, but I'm gonna show you now how we're gonna break it down and you can see exactly where the savings is and which cake comes out to be cheaper in the long run. So let's do that now. I'm back in the Bake Diary program, and as you can see, I've loaded in the exact same recipe for Walmart, Costco, and Baker's Bodega. I'm gonna start by pulling up the Costco recipe, and this exact same recipe is the same wherever I shopped, and I just wanna show you that these are the cost breakdowns for everything. It literally tells you for a half a cup of butter from Costco, it cost me 88 cents, and then it kinda goes down um, for all of the different things that I purchased. There's some things that Costco didn't carry, so I had to use another bulk company, so I used Restaurant Depot. And so I just wanna break down for you though that every single recipe is exactly the same, and then it breaks down for every single ingredient what that comes out to. So let's look at the total right here. So Walmart, this same cake cost me $12.85 to make. At Costco, it cost me $7.96 to make. And at Baker's Bodega, it cost me $6.17. That's because every single thing that's broken down here is cheaper. Why? We spent more initially, but we purchased in bulk, and so things come out to be almost pennies in some cases, right? Well, that's not the same for Walmart. So let's head back over to that sheet. So here you have it. Our trip to Walmart, although it only cost us $47.05, the cake cost me $12.85 to make. Now these are only using the ingredients for the cake. We haven't even factored in the filling, the frosting, the cake board, the labor, any of that stuff. I'm simply using this video as an example to show you how you should never ever be asking someone else how much your cakes should cost, right? Or how much you should be charging for them. Leaving Walmart, we went straight to Costco. We spent $167.14. Now that might sound like a lot, especially in the beginning when you're first starting, but again, this cut the cake price almost in half, you guys. So the same exact cake, same ingra exact ingredients, same exact amounts of ingredients cost me only $7.96. And then the same for Baker's Bodega. Um, which is wholesale again. $645.18 is what we spent on our shopping trip, but now we've got so many ingredients that will help us mass produce tons of things in the future. That took it down to less than half of what we are charging for our cake from Walmart. So I hope this makes sense for you. Sometimes people say things like, well, shouldn't it be cheaper if I'm baking from home? And this is a perfect example. I hope you can tag someone in the comments, share this video, but this is a perfect example of how baking from home can actually be more costly than if you're purchasing in bulk. So I hope that you share this. I hope that this makes sense. I hope that it's eye-opening for you enough to actually sit down and figure out how much the cost of your ingredients are costing you so you can be properly pricing your products. All right, if this video was helpful, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And if there are any other suggestions or titles that you wanna recommend for pricing or starting your business, running your business, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Always happy to help. And I hope that we can connect. Go follow me at Janelle Copeland. I'm also always posting on the Cake Mamas. And you can always go to JanelleCopeland.com for tons of free resources. We've got workshops that happen all the time. And I hope to see you inside of my community. Bye guys.